Uh, this is an instructional video on how to clean a ZSS shredder. This is the front of the machine. I'm going to walk you over to the control panel. Is you need to adjust the control panel to allow you to work on the machine in what we call maintenance mode. And the things you need to do is turn the machine from non-maintenance to maintenance mode and then prepare the screen hydraulics so you can actually open the screen on the shredder. The blue button, having these buttons go, means it's ready to be in maintenance mode. If you don't have it in maintenance mode, the safeties on the machine will remain locked and you won't be able to enter the machine and the ability to uh, bring down the shredder screen, which is right here, uh, will remain in a locked position so you won't be able to work on the machine. So you need to set the main control panel to maintenance mode, have the hydraulics ready, and then have the screen ready on the hydraulics. Right. What we're going to go through now is how to open up um, the front of the shredder. You have it in maintenance mode. We went over that portion. What you're going to need is a 25 millimeter wrench, and that is to open up the main panels. I've already loosened everything up so it's easy to do. This is a safety lock, which is a rundown. Make sure you get the full view. And then you open it up. And then what it does is it presents yourself the full screen. To, reduce, to unscrew the screen, you need a 19 millimeter wrench and an Allen wrench. And that basically works to unscrew, I've already loosened them all up, the six bolts that hold the screen in back a little farther, hold the screen in. Once the screen, the nine, the six bolts are taken out, which we've already done, you then come over to this panel over here and you turn it from screen open to from screen closed to screen open. And then from there, you press these two green buttons. And as recall, we have the hydraulics ready on the screen and this will allow the screen to come down. So by allowing the screen to come down, now it gives you full access to the knives and gives you the ability to take out the screen. We're not going to take the screen out for this, but we're just going to show how it, it comes out. To take out the knives, what you need is an H10, Allen wrench, and you just leverage her in there like this, and then pull to undo it. These knives are in there, and sometimes you might need a longer wrench which is this, because they're in there at, a hunt, at 210 foot-pounds is what we torque these guys down to. So you might have to use a wrench uh, like this. This machine has 68 knives in it. And you just have to take the knives out, you crank on it, this bolt comes undone, and then the knife becomes free. This knife holder stays in the shredder, and these knives then come free. Where most of your material is going to build up is going to be in the front of the knives. I don't know if you get right in there. That's where your material is going to build up. Once you take this knife out, this enables you to get out all that material there. You then take either a knife or something else, clean out along these sides here, and clean out back here. And now you have a nice clean surface. So you're taking away any contaminants that you may have on it. Putting back the knives, you just basically, when you put it back in the first time, mark it, and then when you then torque it, put an X. And what that means is that the knife has been changed, turned around, and then torqued back into position. I'm going to show you what a knife looks like. Just do it there, Paul. This is what a knife looks like in a knife holder. It's all locked in, and this is what the knife hole looks like. What you want to be able to do is just unscrew. The knife, she comes out, and then you have to be able to just turn it around. So you just turn it, and then clean out inside the pockets of the knife holder, clean out the back of the knife hole, because the material get back in there. Put her back in. Rotate the knife around one turn and then bolt her back down. And so that's how easy it is to change uh, the knives on this unit. In order 
to turn the rotor because this rotor right now only gives you access to about eight knives. You have somebody over here. You undo the guard belt on the side here, which allows you to get to the belts, hydraulic belts, and you just pull them. And then when you pull them, what it does is it'll rotate the rotor, which gives you access to another set of knives um, as you go through it. So you're kind of pulling this off, pulling them down, rotating uh, the rotor, gives you access to another set of knives. Your main hang-up points for material Main hang-up points for material when looking at this are going to be right in here, these areas here. And what you need to do is take a wire brush to them, brush these out, clean all this off, have a nice strong vacuum. You vacuum out all these areas here. There's the ability to get material caught here as well. So you're working through that. Then once the screen's out, you take off all the material that hangs up in the back here. See, I'm going through all this stuff, but the screen will be out. You're gonna get all this material out of these angles and your hangups here and here, and then let it just drop down and vacuum out. But you can see it's fairly easy to get to almost all the crevices on these knives. And then it's just a strong vacuum and like a, a swipper brush, bring it along here cleans off any material that can be on your back screen support uh, that we have in that location. And from doing this, you get the whole front and back end of the shredder cleaned of its material. This is the inside of the chamber, uh, and this is fairly easy to clean. As you see along the back wall there, there's a half moon. You'll need to get a brush in there and brush out all the material that's gonna hang up in this whole area here and then in the corners here. What we normally do is somebody will get into the machine and be able to do this clean out procedure. They'll also switch, if you see right there, those knives in the front of the rotor there. Let's see if I can point to them right here. Those knives have a knife plate. We basically unscrew those plates, rotate the knives, and clean out any material that may hang up in that area. So while one person's doing the knives in the front, a second person is cleaning out the internal area here, and we keep pushing the material down. Then you go in, you vacuum out all your hangups you could have inside the shredder. And there aren't a whole lot, but you just have to be very careful as you go through. Again, your main hang-up area is gonna be in those corners of your, of your rotor and you just vacuum it out. The machine that you've selected will have a door. I'm gonna to move to another machine. If you look, this is what we call a dog house. And see how they have that door there? That door on bolts, when we take off those uh, four, uh, it's five bolts there, then that allows you access into the dog house. And so it's all closed off, but that'll be the way to get actually into the machine to be able to clean inside the hopper um, of the machine. But uh, as you can tell, it's a rounded hopper and all the material slides forward. So it's really vacuuming out the floors, vacuuming out the dust and getting into the corner edges um, along the whole unit there. But it's a fairly easy internal chamber to clean out. Once you've cleaned out the internal bin, which is up in here, uh, your chamber basic area, and you've gone through, rotated all the knives, and retorqued all the knives, now it's time to close up the machine. And closing up these machines is a fairly easy process. You put the screen back in that you've taken out, and then everything should be cleaned in this area. Come over to here, press the control panel from open to close, and then just turn around. You close up the screen, and then reinsert all the bolts and the washers into the screen to basically lock her back down. And then that'll lock her in the place. And then once you do all six of these, you torque them down. And it's like a hundred foot pounds just to make sure they're in a good spot. You then close this one door, which activates the safety on this side. You close this door and tighten her up all the way. And this will activate the safety on the left-hand side. The unit will not run if these safeties are not engaged. 
And that's to prevent anyone from getting their hand near the rotor and the screen and uh, getting damaged uh, through this process. So you have that in, locks it up. These come in, locks them down. You do the same thing over here. And these can be just hand tightened, but that'll ensure that now nobody can get to the cutting area of it, of the machine, and uh, keeps you protected from the rotor. So everything's set over here. We walk in over here to our control panel, which is right here. We turn screen hydraulics off. We turn maintenance mode off. And what the machine now, it'll be ready to run in, uh, in run mode once you do these procedures. And so that's kind of the way the board is, is set up. And then when we're all done, just go like this. It basically kills all the power um, to your unit here. So all in all, the, the ZSS um, uh, side shredders are very easy to maintain and very easy to clean. And all the procedures we went over and the torquing are in the manuals um, that we present. And we also have all the safety procedures and safety warnings in these manuals. So prior to ever working on this machine, make sure you read the safety manuals. Make sure you go through all the details. The normal time for clean out of this unit, we recommend two people do it. One is working on the knives and in the bin, and while they, the second person finishes cleaning up the bin and rotating it, they're going to go through the procedures of greasing um, the bearings on the right side, on the left side, Greasing the bearings on the right side, checking your gear fluids, which was right here, to make sure all the fluids are in good condition here, making sure you appropriately grease here, making sure your belts are the appropriate tightness, going around torquing all the key components of it, making sure your Zock absorbers are in good condition, grease your motor, and then change your filter and any fluids you may have in your hydraulic system here. And it's important to always maintain your hydraulic fluids and clean your filters on it. These hydraulics are such an important part of these machines and they really get worked hard, especially in the summer, to prevent any heat ups or deterioration of the system when it gets hot and humid within your uh, facilities. There you go.